Hello, I'm Willie from the Ozarks, and we're ready for our August the 5th lesson of 2022, Lesson 217 in A Course in Miracles workbook for students from the original edition, which is a uh, review of Lesson 197. It can be but my gratitude I earned. Sandwiched between this divine idea that he wants us to really, really get, I am not a body, I am free. For I am still as God created me. I never became an ego. I never became a body in reality. I, I made a body to function in a world of illusions that I'm going to wake up from. But I, I think that's the best way to say it. I'm not positive that's the best way. And you know, a lot of things that I tell you all are kind of things that I'm learning. And I, I don't want you to limit your own learning to just what I've learned. So give yourself lots of space to, to understand it from your own heart. I am not a body, I am free, for I am still as God created me. It can be but my gratitude I earn. It can be but my gratitude I earn. And listen to this mind bender. For me it is. He says, who should give thanks for my salvation but myself? Okay, that makes sense. Who should give thanks for my salvation but myself? And how but through salvation can I find the self to whom my thanks are due? <laughs> you, 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 know, you think that yourself is this body, but that's not our self. We've got to look bigger picture, not look at, we're going to learn this in our, in our text reading today, but we don't want to look at form to, di to identify we can't ever look at God's form to identify because he's content. He's substance. He's meaning. He's, he's reality. Form is not content. Okay, so I, it can be but my gratitude I earn. Who should give thanks for my salvation but myself? And how but through salvation can I find the self to whom my thanks are due? I am not a body, I am free, for I am still as God created me. All right, well, let's, let's go. We'll come back to that here in just a little bit. Let's go take a look in our uh, text reading. And we're in chapter 24, Specialness and Separation, section 6, The Resolution of the Dream. The Resolution of the Dream. While you're getting ready to, if you want to follow along in your book, uh, let me give you just a minute to get there. Aquadus fava. Aquadulce fava. A fava bean, it says it's an 85-day bean. This 19th century Spanish heirloom produces large white beans extra early in the season. A great protein source for cool climate areas. Aqua dulce. So it's a, a you know, the, the, the favas are nice because they, they, they grow in the cool season, where a lot of beans won't do that. Your green beans, and uh, they definitely need that warm season. Okay, and I read to you out of the Baker's Creek Heirloom Seeds Catalog. The resolution of the dream. The Christ in you is very still. He looks on what he loves and knows it as himself. And thus does he rejoice at what he sees because he knows that it is one with him and with his Father. Specialness, too, takes joy in what it sees, although it is not true. <laughs> Yet what you seek for is a source of joy as you conceive it and lack faith that it is so. Oh, and excuse me. And what you seek for is a source of joy as you conceive it. What you wish is true for you. Nor is it possible that you can wish for something and lack faith that it is so. Wishing makes real, as surely as does will create. The power of a wish upholds illusions as strongly as does love extend itself, except that one deludes and the other heals. <laughs> See that difference between uh, when you believe in an, in, in, a, in an illusion? Well, he says that that deludes and the other heals. 
Wishing makes real as surely as does will create. The power of a wish upholds illusions as strongly as does love extend itself, except that one deludes, the other heals. So be sure, be, be careful about your wishing, that your wishing for, that your, your will is a united with what is true and not with what's going to delude you further. Because we need healing, not delusion, don't we? 41. There is no dream of specialness, however hidden or disguised the form, how lovely it may seem to be, however much it delicately offers the hope of peace and the escape from pain, in which you suffer not your condemnation. So, there is no dream of specialness, in which you suffer not your condemnation. There is no dream of specialness, however hidden or disguised the form, however lovely it may seem to be, however much it delicately offers the hope of peace and the escape from pain, in which you suffer not it, your condemnation. In dreams, effect and cause are interchanged. For here the maker of the dream believes that what he made is happening to him. He does not realize he picked a thread from here, a scrap from there, and wove a picture out of nothing. For the parts do not belong together, and the whole contributes nothing to the parts to give them meaning. That's the, the world of illusions. Next paragraph, 42. Where could your peace arise but from forgiveness? Ah, there's our great, the great way of salvation to recognize what is not real and, and recognize that it is not real. And turn, let it down, let go and let God. Where could your peace arise but from forgiveness? The Christ in you looks only on the truth and sees no condemnation that could need forgiveness. He is at peace because he sees no sin. Identify with him and what has... Okay, let's back up here. He is at peace because he sees no sin. Identify with him. And what has he that you have not? He is your eyes, your ears, your hands, your feet. How gentle are the sights he sees, the sounds he hears. How beautiful his hand that holds his brothers. And how lovingly he walks beside him, showing him what can be seen and heard and where he will see nothing. And there is no sound. And there is no sound to hear. So he's going to show you that you can see what you can see that's real and what you don't want to see or hear because it's not real. So that's why we want to listen to the crumb, follow the Christ to remove delusion and to offer healing. 45. Yet let your specialness direct his way and you will follow and both will walk in danger, each intent in the dark forest of the sightless, unlit but by the shifting tiny gleams that sparks an instant from the fireflies of sin and then go out to lead the other to a nameless precipice and hurl them over it. For what can specialness delight in but to kill? And what does it seek for but the sight of death? Where does it lead but to destruction? Yet think not that it looked upon your brother first, nor hated him before it hated you. The sin its eyes behold in him and love to look upon, it saw in you and looks on still with joy. Yet is it joy to look upon decay and madness and believe this crumbling thing with flesh already loosened from the bone and sightless holes for eyes is like yourself? <laughs> 44. Rejoice! You have no eyes with which to see, no, no ears to listen, and no hands to hold, nor feet to guide. Be glad that only Christ can lead you his, oh, excuse me, be glad that only Christ can lend you his, while you have need of them. 
he's going to lend you his, his eyes and his ears and his hands and feet to guide us. Be glad that only Christ can lend you his while you have need of them. They are illusions too as much as yours. And yet, because they serve a different purpose, the strength their purpose holds is given them. And what they see and hear and hold and lead is given light that you may lead as you were led. The Christ in you is very still. He knows where you are going and he leads you there in gentleness and blessing all the way. His love for God replaces all the fear you thought you saw within yourself. His loveliness shows you himself in him whose hand you hold and whom you lead to him. Let me read that sentence again. His holiness shows you himself in him whose hand you hold and whom you lead to him. And what you see is like yourself. For what but Christ is there to see and hear and love and follow home? He looked upon you first, but recognized that you were not complete. And so he sought for your completion in each living thing that he beholds and loves, and seeks it still that each might offer you the love of God. Wouldn't it be nice to see and feel and experience the love of God in each brother and sister, in each sight, and everything that your eyes see and your ears hear? That's not, that's healing. That's not more illusion or delusion as he calls it. So that let's let that be what we value and what we want. Okay, well, let's stop there. We'll pick up there and uh, ready for paragraph 46. We'll probably start in 45 tomorrow, okay? Uh, I, I, I will mark that later. I don't have my pen on me. All right, let's go back and take a look. It can be but my gratitude I earn. I am not a body. I am free, for I am still as God created me. Only my condemnation injures me. My condemnation keeps my vision dark, and through my sightless eyes I cannot see the vi Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm reading the, the wrong section. It can be but my gratitude I earn. I'm sorry. I, I, I was reading to you out of 2.18. It's 2.17 today. I am not a body. I am free, for I am still as God created me. It can be but my gratitude I earn. Who should give thanks for my salvation but myself? Who should give thanks for my salvation but myself? But who is myself? And how but through salvation can I find the self? to whom my thanks are due. <laughs> Remember, we don't just end at this physical body. That's not, that's not, that's actually not us at all. I mean, it's an, some people call it an avatar being used on the physical frequency, but our reality is content and it can't be meaningfully expressed in form is what we're starting to understand. So we're going to give thanks to ourselves as we see ourselves in everyone and everything. I am not a body. I am free, for I am still as God created me. You know, I think we've got enough time. Let's go ahead and go back and look at 197. It can be but my gratitude I earn. Here is the second step we take to free your mind from the belief an outside force pitted against your own. You make attempts at kindness and forgiveness, yet you turn them to attack again unless you find external gratitude and lavish thanks. Your gifts must be received with honor, lest they be withdrawn. And so you think God's gifts are loans at best, at worst deceptions which would cheat you of defenses to ensure that when he strikes, he will not fail to kill. How easily are God and guilt confused by those who know not what their thoughts can do. How easily are God and guilt confused by those who know not what their thoughts can do. Deny your strength and weakness must become salvation to you. See yourself as bound and bars become your home. Nor will you leave the prison house or claim your strength until guilt and salvation are not seen as one and freedom and salvation are perceived as joined with strength beside them to be sought and claimed and found and 
fully recognized. The world must thank you when you offer it release from your illusions, yet your thanks belong to you as well, for its release can only mirror yours. Your gratitude is all your gifts require that they be a lasting offering of a thankful heart released from hell forever. Is it this you would undo by taking back your gifts because they were not honored? It is you who honor them and give them fitting thanks, for it is you who have received the gifts. It does not matter if another thinks your gifts unworthy. In his mind, there is a part that joins with yours in thanking him. Now, that's a beautiful idea that you can always recognize even if your brother or sister don't recognize it yet in this experience. It does not matter if another thinks your gifts unworthy. In his or her mind, there is a part that joins with yours in thanking you. It does not matter if your gifts seem lost and ineffectual. They are received where they are given. In your gratitude are they accepted universally and thankfully acknowledged by the heart of God himself. And would you take them back when he has gratefully accepted them? God blesses every gift you give to him and every gift is given him because it can be given only to yourself and what belongs to God must be his own. Yet you will never realize his gifts are sure, eternal, changeless, limitless, forever giving out, extending love, and adding to your never-ending joy while you forgive but to attack again. Wow, we don't want to use attack, do we? We will end up losing all that awareness. We won't realize his gifts are sure, eternal, changeless, limitless, forever giving out, extending love, and adding to your never-ending joy. Withdraw the gifts you give and you will think that what is given you has been withdrawn. But learn to let forgiveness take away the sins you think you see outside yourself. And you can never think the gifts of God are lent but for a little while before he snatches them away again in death. For death will have no meaning for you then. Wow, listen to that. Freedom from even the, the, the concept of death. Withdraw the gifts you give and you will think that what is given you has been withdrawn. But learn to let forgiveness take away the sins you think you see outside yourself. And you can never think the gifts of God are lent but for a little while before he snatches them away again in death. For death will have no meaning for you then. Practice forgiveness so that death will have no meaning. And with the end of this belief is fear forever over. For with the end of this belief in death, this belief that uh, you can forgive to attack again, fear is forever over. Thank yourself for this, for he is grateful only unto God, and he gives thanks for you unto himself. To everyone who lives will Christ yet come, for everyone must live and breathe in him. His being in his Father is secure because their will is one. Their gratitude to all they have created has no end, for gratitude remains a part of love. Thanks be to you, the Holy Son of God. Thanks be to you, the Holy Son of God, for as you were created, you contain all things within yourself, and you are still as God created you, nor can you dim the light of your perfection. In your heart, the heart of God is laid. He holds you dear because you are himself. All gratitude belongs to you because of what you are. Give thanks as you receive it. Be you free of all ingratitude to anyone who makes yourself complete. And from this self is no one left outside. Listen to that. Give thanks as you receive it. Be you free of all ingratitude to anyone who makes yourself complete. And from this self is no one left outside. So be, be sure to give thanks to everybody who helps you, makes you complete. Give thanks for all the countless channels which extend this self. All that you do is given unto him. 
all that you think can only be his thoughts, sharing with him the holy thoughts of God. Earn now the gratitude you have denied yourself when you forgot the function God has given you, but never think that he has ever ceased to offer thanks to you. <laughs> so he's telling us to be like him. He says in that last couple sentences, all that you think can only be his thoughts, sharing with him the holy thoughts of God. Remember, all the other thoughts are illusions. They're dreams. They're not even real thoughts. I mean, they seem to be thoughts because of our creative ability, but they're blanks. They're, they're not, they're, it's, it's nothing. So he says, all that you do is given unto him. All that you think can only be his thoughts, sharing with him the holy thoughts of God. Earn now the gratitude you have denied yourself when you forgot the function God has given you, but never think that he has ever ceased to offer thanks to you. <laughs> and one last time on our lesson today. So that was, our, that was the actual uh, lesson 197. We went ahead and read it. I am not a body, I am free, for I am still as God created me. Only my, uh, uh, excuse me, I almost did it again. Only my condemnation injures me. It was at a Freudian slip. <laughs> it can be but my gratitude I earn. It can be but my gratitude I earn. Who should give thanks for my salvation but myself? Who should give thanks for my salvation but myself? And how but through salvation can I find the self to whom my thanks are due? It can be but my gratitude I earn. I am not a body, I am free, for I am still as God created me. Thank you all so much for joining me on this uh, journey of, uh, of appreciating, of gr having gratitude to all that we come in contact with, to all that we think, to everything we experience. We need to learn to lavish thanks. So we thank Thank you, God, for our opportunities to see you in everyone. I am not a body. I am free, for I am still as God created me. It can be but my gratitude I earn. I am not a body. I am free, for I am still as God created me.